Good evening, my Hampstead Baptist family. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday evening. Uh, I know that normally we don't put a video out on Wednesday evenings, but wanted to use this time to say, uh, please be in prayer for all of our fellow members here at HBC. We have everything from COVID to injuries to all kinds of things going through the congregation. We were super short staffed tonight because of that. And so in both an abundance of caution because of COVID and different illnesses of that sort, as well as wanting to make sure that we can do things to the best of our ability, um, we have decided to postpone activities for tonight and we will uh, be resuming activities here on campus on May 2nd, so this coming Sunday. Well, for tonight, we're just gonna have a short devotional, if you will, or uh, a short chat about scripture. I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 11. This is one of my favorite of the Proverbs. And so I just want to look at where we find our discernment and where we find our, um, our wisdom. Where do we find, what is, how do we understand the wise direction to go find what we need? And so this proverb is, a rich person is wise in his own eyes, but a poor one who has discernment sees through him. Now, these Proverbs were typically, you would send them home and then come back and talk about them. And so, just looking at it, we have a contrast between a rich person and a poor one. One who is looking at himself with his own eyes and another who is looking at another with their eyes. So, the rich person, it says, is wise in his own eyes. In his, in his own introspection, he finds wisdom. And remember, wisdom is not simply having witty sayings or cutting things to say, right? Wisdom is the skill with which we navigate life. It is the, the ability to not just apply knowledge, but to apply it and carry out the actions which must follow. So the wisdom of God was the cross, right? That God knew what we needed and he applied that knowledge in the best way, which was the cross. And thank God for the wisdom of the cross, right? And so we have a, a rich man, and by all earthly standards, if you are rich, that typically gets equated to being successful. We don't take many poor people and put them in front of massive crowds for um, uh, big speeches or anything. We, we try to find what we deem as successful, right? We place them in front of everybody. And this rich person, they are wise in their own eyes, in their own thinking, they find a sufficiency in their own thoughts. They know better than everyone. They know what uh, to think about this or that. And they are wise by their own standard. Now there's a problem to being wise by your own standard. And that's that there is no check or balance to catch when you are in foolishness. Right? I may think that I am wise. But I have to be careful because I'm measuring based on my own self. And oftentimes, if you're like me, you can lower the bar a little bit to help yourself out. We like to cheat the bar just a bit. Well, then look what it says. But a poor man, right? A poor man, which is the flip of being rich, is poor, who has discernment, sees through him. So this rich man is saying, I have all of this wisdom. I have this I have things figured out and I have much to tell you. And this poor man who, according to earthly thought, should listen to the rich man, he has discernment, which appears to be what the rich man does not have. And because of that, he is able to see through the rich man. Now, in the context of these Proverbs, there's a lot of Proverbs here that deal with the idea of um, rich people who are getting their gains by ill means and are taking advantage of the poor and things of that sort. So very likely what this is, is it's a warning. It says it's better to be poor but have discernment, which discernment is ultimately not my own craftiness, but is the Lord, right? That being, for in our application, being led by the Spirit, by listening to the Word of the Lord, by doing all of these things, we are better off than a rich person, somebody who is ideal, but it's all wisdom in their own eyes. 
This applies to our lives in a couple ways, but I think the most pertinent is this. How do we know where to find our hope? The rich man, whose wisdom is in his own eyes, will find his hope in what he deems fit. Right? He will try to sell, if you will, the hope that he has found. Whether that's um, money, whether that's prestige, or let's bring it in our context, activities, um, you know, parents often placing their hope in their children, living vicariously through their children. Uh, a hope in a job, a hope in money, a hope in retirement, a hope in this, a hope in that. And we will judge it based on our own values. And we may have a lot. But that doesn't mean that it's right. It's better to be poor, but to be following the Lord, to follow the wisdom of the Lord, which is the cross, and to not be fooled by everything else, to not be fooled into the idea that all these other things are actually what will bring us hope and will bring us salvation and will bring us peace. Because ultimately they won't. They will fail you every time. So I love this proverb because it totally backfires on everything that we are told to think. We are told to think through the lens of the world. I've often heard the phrase, um, you can be so heavenly minded that you're no, of no earthly good. And I honestly hate that phrase because we are called to be heavenly minded in every aspect of our lives. So follow heavenly discernment. Follow the Lord's way. Live the Lord's way. Seek wisdom through the cross and the Lord will guide your step. Now, he will also guide you to the cross. So count the cost. So this is just one of my favorite Proverbs. Be praying for our fellow church members. Uh, good Christian discernment says to love one another, we must pray for one another. So I want to encourage you, pick out about five people tonight. Maybe you're with your family tonight. Maybe you're, I don't know who you're with, but maybe you and a family in it. Pick out five names, five people that you know, and they could be sick or they could be not sick. And I want you to dedicate to for the next three days. So Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I want you to begin praying for them as a family every night. Five people. Pick five people from our congregation. Five people you know. Five brothers and sisters. And begin praying and pray something akin to this. Lord, please give them the discernment that is the cross. Lord, I pray that you would bless my brother and sister and that you would do wondrous things. If they need healing, that you would bring healing. If they need peace, that you bring peace. But ultimately, that you would guide them just like I want you to guide me. Guide them through the Spirit towards your cross always. So that's my prayer for our church. That's our, my prayer for one another during this time. So I hope you'll join me in doing this, praying for five of our members, and that we'll have discernment that's not from this world, but that's of the cross. So I look forward to seeing you uh, on hopefully on Sunday, either on this virtual format or in person. If you're sick, please get well. If you're running any kind of fever or anything, please go get well. That's the way you can um, serve and that you can love is go get well so you can rejoin us when you're feeling good. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day.